How close are we to developing artificial psychic abilities? What human experiments were performed on Tetsuo to activate his psychic abilities? And was Tetsuo truly evil or just a misunderstood character? Hi guys and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be doing a deep dive into the Akira anime. Now I'd love to hear your thoughts on Tetsuo being this anime's villain and let me know down below if there's any other characters that you'd like to see me break down on this channel. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's begin. So here we meet Tetsuo, one of the main protagonists of this series. He's an orphan delinquent and a member of a biker gang trying to gain territory in Neo Tokyo. And here we see him collide with one of the espers in the series who have psychic abilities, hitting his head in the process. And it's this fateful encounter and head injury that changes Tetsuro's life forever, activating his own latent psychic abilities. And I like how it's a collision that sets off the chain reaction of this story. As surprisingly, there's been many cases where people have either sustained head injuries or had a stroke and ended up with almost superhuman abilities. These have included cases where people have become math geniuses, language learning experts, and even those who've developed dexterous skills and become master sculpturers. Really, there's just so many mysteries that we don't know about the human brain. So here it looks like Tetsuo is undergoing some form of brain imaging, with the doctor using this neuroannulizer to help determine the results. Now we have some very similar tools in modern medicine, whether that's the functional MRI scan or an EEG that's used to help determine the electrical activity in a patient suffering with epilepsy. However, this specific neuroanalyzer that the doctor's using looks as though it detects brain patterns that would be found only in those people with psychic abilities. And it's interesting because if psychic abilities did actually exist, I'd imagine that we'd probably end up creating some form of technology like this to help analyze our patients' brains. <laughs> So here we're seeing that without Tetsuo's consent, he's being absorbed into the government's secret human experimentation to help develop his psychic abilities further. And later on in the movie, we see that they also implemented these methods in developing the psychic abilities of both the Espers as well as Akira, the character in which this anime is named after. And it's really shocking when you realize that the consideration given to the medical ethics of human experimentation is still a relatively new concept. I mean, you only really need to look back to the 1950s where there was the thalidomide tragedy where several thousand babies were born with severe birth defects due to poorly tested medications. <laughs> So here we can see that Tetsuo has escaped the government's captivity as he meets up with this girlfriend character, Kaori. And here he describes how during the experiments, he was confined to an operating table. This combined with the bandages that we see wrapped around his head, you've got to assume that he's undergone some form of brain surgery to help to enhance his psychic abilities. Now, although there isn't any scientific evidence that psychic abilities exist, are we getting any closer with our medical advancements? Well, yes, we are. For example, we now can implant chips into people's brains that allow them to communicate through either texting or using a computer. And really, if you can imagine a futuristic environment where everything is working on a smart technology system, then being able to control things with your mind isn't that far-fetched of an idea. What do you guys think? <laughs> Ah! 
Tetsuo! So I think this scene where Tetsuo is wanting to escape with Kaori helps to humanise him as a character compared to how he's portrayed later in the movie. You see, in this dystopian and apocalyptic world of Akira, Tetsuo's desire to escape with Kaori represents a quest for humanity and normalcy in and amongst all of the chaos. And I feel this really helps to underscore the human element of this story. So here we see Tetsuo exacting his revenge against a rival gang member who assaulted his girlfriend Kaori. And Kanada has had to step in to stop him from killing him. And Kanada recognizes that this seems to be a different Tetsuo from his usual measured self. Could this be down to the experimentation he's had on his brain? You see, the frontal cortex is the part of the brain that's involved in decision making as well as your motor movements. And so if I was a doctor looking to enhance your telekinesis psychic abilities, this is probably the area that I'd be focusing on. However, interestingly, it's also the part of the brain that helps to regulate your emotions. And so a dysfunction in this area could contribute to you being more impulsive, as well as having more erratic and unexpected behaviors and even emotions like what we're seeing Tetsuo exhibit here. <laughs> So I believe that Canada's repeated acts of saving Tetsuo have had a significant impact on both his character and psychological development. You see, firstly, Canada's consistent rescue of Tetsuo almost creates a level of dependency, where as a child, although Canada's his friend, he's also viewed as his protector. And as Tetsuo's psychic abilities develop, the recurring presence of Canada almost acts as a reminder of his previous inadequacies, with him developing an almost inferiority complex. And I believe it's this that fuels his need to prove and demonstrate his now superior powers. Hey, wait. Where are you going? <laughs> So here we start to see Tetsuo's psychic abilities manifesting for the first time, and it looks like it's completely overwhelming his brain, with him having almost hallucination-like visions. But theoretically, why might this be occurring? Well, hallucinations can actually be associated with abnormal activation of the temporal lobes of your brain. These are the lobes that are normally involved in the auditory and visual processing of your environment. And so I wonder whether Tetsuo's psychic awakening is causing a hyperactivation of this part of the brain, leading to a distortion of his perceptions, and even these hallucinations. So fortunately, the government agents were nearby and they were able to attend a semi-conscious Tetsuo and administer him a medication. I assume this is there to help stabilize his brain activity after his psychic awakening. Clearly, Tetsuo's brain isn't capable of containing these new psychic abilities. Maybe in time, he will learn to adapt. However, at the rapid rate of its evolution, it's completely overwhelming him. You see, our brains are actually able to evolve with time due to a process called neuroplasticity. This is the process by which new neuronal pathways are able to form in the brain in response to a new stimulus, allowing you to learn new skills. For example, playing an instrument or learning a new language. So a constant theme that we see throughout this anime is Tetsuo being in pain and specifically suffering with these headaches. But why might this be occurring? Well, one theory would be that it's due to the intense and unprecedented level of neuronal activity that's occurring in his brain as his psychic abilities develop. 
And my other theory is it's down to a change in his cerebral blood flow. You see, as the brain works more, it requires more nutrients and oxygen, and therefore the blood supply to the brain must change. And what we know in modern medicine is that a change in cerebral blood flow, specifically vasodilation of blood vessels in the brain, can actually account for migraines. Oh gosh, what a way to go, getting completely crushed by Tetsuo psychic waves. I wouldn't want to have been a doctor working in that hospital ward. So Tetsuo finally has the opportunity to confront the other espers, and when he does, you can see that they're on completely different levels with their psychic abilities. But why might this be the case? Well, clearly this is all theoretical, but could it have something to do with Tetsuo's traumatic childhood? You see, he was abandoned as a child at an orphanage, and later bullied and only really rescued by having a friend in Canada. Whereas the Espers, on the other hand, are shown to be a collective group of friends that were brought into the government's secret experimentation. Was it the fact that Tetsuo had deep-seated issues with being abandoned, rejection, and feelings of inadequacies that made him go on to develop more violent and aggressive abilities? As we often see that some of our most talented of champions in the real world come from tortured pasts. <laughs> So, the idea that the more Tetsuo uses his psychic abilities, the greater the physical toll it has on his body is a theme that runs throughout this story. But why might this be the case? Firstly, using psychic abilities looks like it takes a massive mental and emotional toll on Tetsuo. Even the act of manipulating and controlling psychic energy, particularly when done at high levels and with intense emotions, looks completely exhausting and over the long term could contribute to fatigue and stress. Also, as we spoke of earlier, Tetsuo's body has inherent biological limitations with being able to take the strain from using his psychic abilities. And it's the rapid and intense development of these that could outpace his body's ability to adapt potentially resulting in his demise, much like it did with Akira. So here it appears as though Tetsuo is beginning to exhibit signs of a god complex, especially as his psychic abilities begin to develop, and he becomes more in control of his environment and the people around him. Developing such a complex can often give people a sense of superiority, and they can often end up lacking empathy for others and having a willingness to try and control people. And it looks like it's most targeted towards Canada, possibly due to their dynamic of rivalry and control, with Tetsuo now trying to assert his dominance. <laughs> So this is probably the last thing you'd be recommending someone whose brain is undergoing a transformation, a psychedelic or psychoactive drug. Especially when bought off the street, these can have unpredictable dosages within each tablet, meaning that it can have an unpredictable impact on your brain. And for someone who's going through a mental transformation, this could cause them to lose touch with reality. And with my understanding of the manga, Tetsuo goes on to develop a dependency on this medication later on in the story. And it's this dependency that contributes to his overall descent into a more unstable and erratic state. Heh, <laughs> 
I like how Tetsuo's character design changes as we progress through this movie. You can see, as he begins to don this cape, that that sense of megalomania really begins to come through. Even the more subtle changes, such as his hair standing on end, makes him appear as though he's a more powerful character. And it actually looks like a design point that the Saiyans took from the Dragon Ball Z franchise. <laughs> So Akira's form is that of several vials that looks like they've been kept in a cryogenic capsule. And I guess the idea is that the cryostasis is there to help preserve Akira's cells until technology has advanced to a point where scientists are better able to analyse his powers. Again, the whole idea of human experimentation as a doctor, particularly on children, is just sickening. Oh, oh God, so Tetsuo gets his arm completely blown off there. This is pretty graphic. And they do this using a weapon called the SOL, otherwise known as the Satellite Orbital Laser. Now try and put yourself in Tetsuo's position. Sustaining an injury like this is only going to contribute to your growing resentment, anger and need for revenge against the government who've both kidnapped you and then experimented on you. We've got to remember that before all of this happened, that Tetsuo was just a teenager who was probably enjoying aspects of his life, whereas now he's public enemy number one, and there's no way of going back to that way of life. You know, I'm really amazed with how futuristic and ahead of its time that this anime really is. I mean, can you believe it that it's actually older than me? And it came out around the same time as The Little Mermaid, which wasn't exactly pushing the envelope. But what does this scene show us? Well, it looks like with sustaining this injury that it's caused Tetsuo to undergo a process of adaptation and compensation, whereby he's now more able to harness his psychic abilities. But just remember, the more he uses his psychic abilities, the more harm he's potentially causing himself. <laughs> So here we can see that this doctor had continued to experiment on Tetsuo, despite seeing the impact on his psyche and physical health and being advised to proceed with caution. Why is there always a mad scientist behind every great villain? I now understand why people don't trust their doctors. <laughs> So at this point, it looks like Tetsuo's psychic abilities have completely overwhelmed him, to the point where they're actually beginning to control his body, mutating his anatomy into something that no longer resembles a human. You know, maybe this is actually a metaphor that symbolises the decay of Tetsuo's humanity, as well as the corrupting nature of unchecked psychic powers. <laughs> You know, the way in which Tetsuo's body is continuing to expand and mutate has always kind of reminded me of how cancers grow. Remember, cancer involves the rapid and unregulated division of cells to the point of forming a tumour. Similarly, Tetsuo's psychic abilities are causing this rapid and unregulated mutation and expansion in his body, particularly from his right arm. And I wouldn't be surprised if the author and writer had an understanding of the scientific processes like this when they were imagining this type of scene.
You know, at the end of this story, although Tetsuo had killed and become a bit of a monster, I kind of feel sorry for him. Ultimately, he had a really troubled past, whether that was being abandoned as a child or victimised through human experimentation. He certainly suffered both emotional and physical harm, and you couldn't really see how this story was going to end well for him. And I think this story really illustrates these points well, which makes you want to empathise more with Tetsuo as a character. But let me know what you guys think. Was Tetsuo pure evil, or can you empathise with him as a character? Well, that's a really sad end to this character Tetsuo, but a fantastic ending to this anime. If you'd like to see more like this, I've left two further videos up here. Why not check them out? Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks.